Welcome to the Maundy Thursday service at St Clement's Church, Cambridge. Of course, we're not in the church itself, but in the homes of the various contributors. That means that we can't enact the ceremonies normally associated <clears throat> with this service. But I'm quite sure those of you accustomed to those ceremonies can imag imagine them in your mind's eye. The service will end with a traditional reading of Psalm 22. After that, you may wish to keep a few moments silent and the electronic equipment trans transmitting this service will be switched off. So let us start. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. God our Father, who hast invited us to share in the supper which thy Son hath given to his church, that it may proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who liveth and reigneth with thee in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the 11th chapter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of that according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, 
he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not my will, but thine be done. Those simple, familiar words which Jesus expressed on the night before his death encapsulate his agony. As a human being, he dreaded being nailed to the cross, so he wanted his Father to release him. Let this cup pass, he prayed. Yet he knew that his crucifixion at the hands of his enemies was a vital part of God's plan. But why does God allow his son to endure such a fate? Why does God allow sin to run so rampant in the world that countless tens of thousands of innocent people die daily, like Jesus, at the hands of tyrants and warmongers? If God is love, as the Bible says, why does he not let us all live happily? These questions which are constantly thrown at Christians and which honest Christians throw at themselves are especially sharp when we mark the crucifixion. To echo those words of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, why does God not fashion human beings so that their wills automatically conform to his own? If he did so, people would still suffer and die from illness, accidents and old age but they would live in peace. But imagine a world where our wills did click neatly into line with God's will, so that everyone did only what was right. It's an attractive thought, but we would cease to be humans and simply be extensions of God. The essence of being human is freedom to choose. I can choose whether to accept or reject God's will. So human beings, in order to be human, must have the capacity to be cruel and hateful, as Jesus' enemies were. This pushes the question one further on. Why does God want humans at all? The answer lies in Gethsemane. Amidst the agony, there was great warmth. Jesus didn't want to be alone, so he took Peter, James and John with him to the garden. Yes, they kept falling asleep, but they wanted to be with him at this moment of agony. These three disciples were friends of Jesus, and he treasured their friendship. God created us, created us to be his companions, as Jesus, James and John were companions of his in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so he gave us freedom of will, the same freedom which Jesus exercised when he said, not my will, but thine be done. <clears throat> now we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church.
Father, we pray that your whole church may be nourished by the feast on your son's body and blood that he draws us to tonight, that it may inspire a deeper memory of his sacrificial love for us and a deeper fulfilment of his command to love as we have been loved. We pray for the faithfulness of all who will keep watch tonight, taking up the call to be Christ's companions and choosing to stay with him, despite being scattered from your altars in your churches. We pray for all who are preaching and ministering the Triduum over the coming days, at a time when its narrative of light overcoming darkness has been made strange and unfamiliar that we may be a people led with confidence into the light of your resurrection. We pray for the leaders of our nation and the world at a time of crisis, that you may bestow on them the means to govern wisely and justly. We pray for the protection of those who continue to work at this time and for the fostering of love and mercy towards those whom they encounter. And we pray that the ever deeper recognition of those workers and loved ones on whom we depend at this time may persist and stir up our wills and our freedoms to join in the continuing revelation of your kingdom's justice for all. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and all diseases attending on it, that all of them may find comfort and healing so it was St Clements who remember particularly Van der Elvey, Brian Watkins and Woody Kahn. And as the numbers of the dead from the virus continue to mount, we pray for those who have died today and will die tonight, and all those who will mourn them. That those who take from this life may be welcomed into the eternal life opened to us by your cross. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, to our benefit and that of all his holy church. <clears throat> he do and is truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware in our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnest repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, and Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with true repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that which is ruled all times and in all places, give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, and only Son, our Lord. And now we give thee thanks, because having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And on the night before he suffered, sitting at table with his disciples, he instituted these holy mysteries, that we, redeemed by his death, 
and restored to life by his resurrection, may be partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy is give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thou by his one oblation himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And to institute and in the Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, <clears throat> entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer any, unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. 
we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs unto thy table, for thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou safe to feed us till you receive these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as assurance thereby of thy favourous goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. <clears throat> and also heirs will have hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and to all such good works as thou have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, we all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of the Watch from Matthew 26. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, will I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Of the glorious body telling, oh, my tongue its mistress sing, and the blood all price excelling, which the world's eternal king 
in a spotless womb once dwelling, shed for this world's ransoming. Given for us, for us descending, or a virgin to proceed, man with man in converse blending, Scattered he the gospel seed, till his sergeant drew to ending, which he closed in wondrous deed. At the last great supper lying, circled by his chosen band, Duly with the law complying, first he finished its command, then immortal food supplying, gave himself with his own hand. Word made flesh by word he made Bread his very flesh to be, man in wine Christ's blood partaketh, and if senses fail to see, faith alone the true heart waketh to behold the mystery. My God, my God, look upon me. Why hast thou forsaken me, and art so far from my health, and from the words of my complaint? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season also, I take no rest. And thou continuest holy, O thou worship of Israel. Our fathers hoped in thee, they trusted in thee, and thou didst deliver them. They called upon thee and were holpen. They put their trust in thee and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, a very scorn of men and the outcast of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips and shake their heads, saying he trusted in God, that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he will have him. But thou art he that took me out of my mother's womb. Thou wast my hope when I hanged yet upon my mother's breast. I have been left unto thee ever since I was born. Thou art my God, even from my mother's womb. O oh, go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help me. Many oxen are come about me, fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart also in the midst of my body is even like melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my gums, and thou shalt bring me into the dust of death. For many dogs are come about me, and the counsel of the wicked layeth siege against me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. Thou art my succour. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, 
from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. Thou hast heard me also from among the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. O praise the Lord, ye that fear him. Magnify him, all ye of the seed of Jacob, and fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For he hath not despised, nor abhorred the low estate of the poor. He hath not hid his face from him, but when he called unto him, he heard him. My praise is of thee in the great congregation. My vows will I perform in the sight of them that fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. They that seek after the Lord shall praise him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember themselves and be turned unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the people. All such as be fat upon earth have eaten and worshipped. All they that go down into the dust shall kneel before him, and no man hath quickened his own soul. My seed shall serve him. They shall be counted unto the Lord for a generation. They shall come. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, whom the Lord hath made.